What is the crossover rate in capital budgeting? And how does an MPV profile help you understand it? The crossover rate is the discount rate beyond which the net present value ranking flips when comparing two projects in capital budgeting. In the example that we explore in this video, we will see that for discount rates from 0% to 19%, the net present value of project A exceeds the net present value of project B. So you would prefer A over B when making an investment decision. However, for discount rates above 19%, the net present value of project A is lower than the net present value of project B. You would now prefer B over A. The ranking flips. How can this happen? Calculating and visualizing the crossover rate and building an MPV profile will help us understand this phenomenon. Our base case is project A. It has an upfront investment of $1,000, shown as a negative and outflow, and four years of expected nominal benefits of $400 each, shown as positives inflows. We are going to compare the cash flow profile of project A to that of project B. More specifically, project B1 has an upfront investment of $900, shown as a negative and outflow, and four years of nominal benefits of $400 each, shown as positives inflows. It's easy to find the difference in cash flow between the projects. If the benefits over the years are expected to be exactly the same for the two projects, and the only difference between them is a lower upfront investment, $100 less in cash outflow for project B1, then project B1 is better than project A at any discount rate, and no crossover rate is available, simply because the MPV ranking does not flip. Something similar happens when comparing the cash flow profile of project A to that of project B2. The upfront investment is the same for the projects, $1,000 each, but in project B2 the expected annual benefits are bigger, $425 per year instead of $400. Project B2 is better than project A at any discount rate, and therefore no crossover rate is available. That changes when we compare project A to project B3. Here project B3 has the advantage of having a lower upfront investment, which is good news for project B3, in terms of its chances of becoming the preferred project. But the disadvantage of having no expected benefits in year 4, which is bad news for project B3. If you look at the cash flow differential between project A and project B3, then what you are really looking at is a difference of $200 now, versus a difference of $400 four years from now. Money now versus money later. A classic time value of money situation. Only if we take the $400 that we expect to receive in the future, four years from now, and translate that $400 to its present value equivalent, today, can we really compare the two amounts. That's where we can apply capital budgeting techniques such as IRR, the internal rate of return. IRR asks the question, what is the discount rate that makes the MPV of the two amounts equal to zero? The easiest way to figure it out is to plug the numbers into an Excel spreadsheet and insert a formula in cell B14. Equals IRR, open parentheses, B13, colon, F13, close parentheses. Rounded to a whole percentage, the answer is that at a discount rate of 19%, the present value of $400 four years from now, minus $200 today, is zero. $400 divided by 1.19 is 336. Divided by 1.19, you get 283. Divide that by 1.19, you get 238. Divide that by 1.19, you get $200. $200 versus $200. The discounted cash flows are each other's exact opposite amounts, and the crossover discount rate of 19% makes it so. So how do you calculate the crossover rate? You simply need to find the internal rate of return, IRR, of the difference in cash flows between two projects. A common way to see the crossover rate in a bigger perspective is to build an MPV profile. An MPV profile shows the sensitivity of a project MPV for different discount rates. Let's build an MPV profile in Excel from the ground up. We start with a discount rate of 
In other words, we don't discount. We will still insert the full Excel formula as we're going to copy this formula across for discount rates higher than 0%. The formula references six cells. Cell B2 for the cash outflow of the investment for project A, cell B5 for the discount rate that is applied to the projects, and cell C2 through F2 for the expected benefits of project A. You can copy over the formula from cell B6 to B7 to do the same for project B. Reference the same discount rate in cell B5, but the project B cash flows in row 3. At a discount rate of 0%, in other words, undiscounted, the NPV of project A is equal to the nominal cash outflow amounts. $1,600 of expected benefits over the four years, minus $1,000 of investment today, which is a net amount of $600. At a discount rate of 0%, the MPV of project B is equal to $1,200 of expected benefits over the three years, minus $800 of investment today, which is a net amount of $400. The MPV of project B at a discount rate of 0% is $200 lower than the MPV of project A. So far, so good. If we add fields to calculate the MPVs of the projects at a 2% discount rate, we find that the MPVs for both project A as well as project B drop, while the difference between the MPVs decreases to $170. At 4% discount rate, the difference between the MPVs decreases to $142. At 6% to $117. That's an interesting pattern. Why not add fields in 2% increments to see where this leads us? Here's how the table looks for discount rates from 0% through 24%. The table shows that for discount rates from 0% through 18%, the NPV of project A exceeds that of project B. For discount rates from 20% and above, the NPV of project A is lower than that of project B. The crossover rate the point where the MPVs of the two projects are equal is halfway between 18% and 20%, around 19%. It's easier to grasp that when we visualize the MPV profile and the crossover rate in the graph. Discount rate on the horizontal axis, net present value on the vertical axis. The MPV of project A as a function of the discount rate is shown as an orange line the MPV of project B as a blue line. For both projects, the higher the discount rate, the further we go to the right, the lower the net present value. The MPV of project A is much higher than that of project B at low discount rates, which means that if you had to select one of these two projects for investment at any of those lower discount rates, then project A would be preferred. However, that MPV gap shrinks the further you go to the right until the MPVs are equal at the crossover rate of 19%. Beyond the crossover rate of 19%, even though the MPVs are getting fairly low or even negative in absolute terms, the MPV of project B is higher than the MPV of project A, which means that if you had to select one of those two projects for investments, project B would be preferred at those higher discount rates. The graph of the MPV profile gives us some additional information. What are the respective discount rates that make the MPV of the projects equal to zero? In other words, what are their IRRs? For project A, the IRR is 21.9%. That's where the orange line intersects the horizontal axis. For project B, the IRR is 23.4%. That's where the blue line intersects the horizontal axis. So while the IRR for project B is higher than that of project A, the MPV of project A is higher than that of project B for discount rates up to 19%. Only for cases where the discount rate is higher than 19% do NPV and IRR both suggest to favor project B. When in doubt, MPV is more important than IRR in capital budgeting. If MPV and IRR don't point you in the same direction of which project you should select, then apply crossover rate analysis to understand the MPV profiles.